Hello, this is Jack Jackson. Welcome to this playlist on geometry. And uh, this video here is going to be just a, an overview of what's coming up in this playlist and uh, some of my goals for the course. This is set up for a course for college geometry. This is for mathematics majors. Uh, however, I think if you're in high school geometry, you will find many of the, these uh, same videos very useful for you as well. Um, so welcome to the course. This course is a formal study of Euclidean and non-Euclidean geometries. Topics will include those typically taught in junior high or senior high classroom uh, geometry class, but they will be taught in more depth along with some additional topics. And so during this course, we will de be developing classical Euclidean geometry from first foundations. So as such, this will include a classical foundational course in Euclidean geometry. However, we will simultaneously be examining several finite geometries and especially taxicab geometry, hyperbolic geometry, and spherical geometry. Each of these classical Euclidean topics will also be examined in these other geometries in a unified approach. And the comparison and contrast of these geometries and their properties will enlighten and deepen our understanding of Euclidean geometry while exploring alternate geometric worlds. We will make strong use of technology and manipulatives, including uh, the dynamic software GeoGebra and uh, linear spheres as a physical model. Um, the linear spheres may or may not show up too much in the videos, but the GeoGebra will show up quite a bit in the videos. And we'll be using these in addition to classical drawing instruments of compass, straight edge, ruler, protractor, maybe some patty paper to investigate, illustrate, and form conjectures in these geometries. And the end of our course will conclude with a study of transformational geometry. The transformations portion of the course will make connections with college algebra, pre-calculus, calculus, group theory, abstract algebra, and linear algebra. And uh, we, we put off the study of transformational geometry toward to, to be toward the end to allow for this unified approach. Some of these things are from my uh, syllabus for the course. Uh, the Common Core Standards and the state standards from Arkansas and Oklahoma for K-12 mathematics education and call for integration of all the Euclidean topics of this course, including transformations along with the study of non-Euclidean geometry in the high school geometry curriculum. Geometry is one of the oldest serious areas of study of mathematics, and the top mathematicians of all time through the mid-20th century all studied geometry, uh, sometimes among other things. Because of the importance of geometry as a mathematical topic and its place in the public school curriculum, this course is currently required of all math majors at the University of Arkansas Fort Smith where I teach this course. It may be used as an elective by other majors and it counts toward a minor in mathematics. Now I want to go over some of my course goals and uh, keeping in mind these goals can help you see uh, how I set up the course. The first thing is standards for mathematical practice. The first and foremost goal of all of my classes is to develop general mathematical thinking skills and abilities. These core abilities are aptly described in the standards for mathematical practice from the Common Core Standards for Mathematics. I have a video over these standards that you may want to uh, watch uh, in, in uh, this playlist, not in this playlist, but up above in another one uh, on my YouTube channel. These process standards were developed to describe the major goals of the K-12 mathematics program. However, they also describe very well the goals of a collegiate mathematics program as well. These standards describe a mathematically proficient learner at the K-12 level. At the undergraduate mathematics major level, we expect a further development and deepening of abilities in each of the eight standards. After completing this class, every student is expected not only to be a mathematically proficient learner, but a math mathematically proficient practitioner. And again, I have a video lecture in the general information uh, part playlist of my YouTube channel. And uh, I, I 
ask my geometry students to watch that as soon as they finish this video. So, math standards for mathematical practice, general standards for thinking, that's my number one goal. Writing proofs is another goal. A major emphasis of the course is develop the ability to write clear and accurate proofs. The concept of a logical proof is the defining characteristic of mathematics. In fact, we might even go so far as to say the writing of proofs is mathematics. Students are expected to come to class with some background in writing proofs. Uh, students at our university have an introductory uh, course in write proof writing called discrete mathematics or introductory discrete mathematics where they write some proofs. Some students may have also encountered writing proofs in hopefully hopefully in their high school geometry class, if not other places, and in other, other uh, courses along the way. Um, so students in my class are expected to come to some uh, class with some background in writing proofs, but we will be greatly building on the skills. And we're going to start with typically using a multi-column style of proof as a means of emphasizing the logical structure of the proof, particularly at the beginning of the course. And will we be very explicit and detailed in writing the proof so that no steps are left to the reader? And this is a pedagogical tool that's used to help quickly and carefully build skills in writing proofs. And by the end of the course, students are expected to be able to be proficient in writing proofs, which are logically and mathematically accurate and easily followed. Third main goal is communication skills. Efficient and accurate communication skills are essential to all aspects of life, including a study of mathematics. Students will be expected to develop high-level oral and written communication skills in the class. Students will prepare written solution sets to weekly homework sets, course projects, and exams. Successful students will demonstrate good written communication skills, demonstrating proper grammar and advanced composition, as well as accurate and insightful mathematical content. Students will also be expected to communicate well orally with the professor and possibly when working with groups of their peers. And students will also demonstrate public speaking skills, uh, perhaps by presenting their work in the class. Another big important goal is the use of technology and different tools. We'll be making very good use of technology. So this will include ancient tools such as a compass, straight edge, ruler, protractor, pencil, blank paper, graph paper. We'll also make use of some more modern manipulatives such as Leonard spheres. And even though they won't be extensively used in the course, we'll have used things like graphing calculators uh, like the TI Inspire CAS or TI-D4. But we'll also make use especially of computer call technology, including use of email, uh, in Microsoft Word, is important there and especially uh, the dynamic software GeoGebra and GeoGebra is uh, use of it I'm going to pull up as my fifth main goal the use of dynamic geometry software is a major component of the course I'll be developing and curating many course resources in this dynamic program it's uh, the good news is that this software is free and open to use there's a robust community of mathematicians and mathematics teachers who have developed extensive resources which are freely available. In fact, they're encouraged to make those freely available. And nearly every course topic will make use of GeoGebra sketches. Students will become experts in creating their own sketches by the end of the semester. And you can go to www.geogebra.org, that's G-E-O-G-E-B-R-A dot O-R-G. Uh, to get started with GeoGebra. And from this site, you can download the GeoGebra Classic app, uh, the latest version, and install it on your computer. It'll work standalone on your computer, but it also works as a web-based uh, application as well. And we will be working most with this version. GeoGebra also has a geometry, a graphing calculator, and CAS calculator apps. Um, Dynamic software is extremely important for us, and, and uh, using that will be uh, a big part of the course. Goal six, axiomatic systems. One major emphasis of the course is to view geometry as a geometry as an axiomatic system. We're going to be viewing more than one geometry. We will explore, explore the role of axioms 
or also known as postulates, uh, theorems, definitions, and proofs within an axiomatic system, and we'll examine the characteristics of an axiomatic system. And so uh, we're going to see how, how an axiomatic system works via the study of, of Euclidean geometry and non-Euclidean geometry. Goal seven is to look at this explore, model, conjecture, test, prove um, continuum. Another important idea to integrate throughout the course is a process by which we explore concepts and problems looking at examples, often constructing general dynamic models and examples in GeoGebra. After carefully ex exploring them, then we can make some conjectures which are things that we think are true, but we haven't proved them to be true yet. Then we can test the conjectures in, say, in GeoGebra, and sometimes this will lead to the creation of a counterexample if we were wrong, uh, or it may help us lead to the idea for a proof if the conjecture is true. And finally, if the conjecture is true, we will close the loop by formally proving the conjecture, making it a proposition or theorem. Another important part of the class is teacher preparation. Since many of the students in my class will be secondary teachers and many of them may end up teaching high school geometry, it's important to cover high school curriculum at least as deep as they cover it in high school and really more depth. So I've set this up so that the Euclidean geometry portion of the course is appropriate for a secondary uh, school geometry class. So if you're in a high school student watching this video, you'll find that although some some topics may go into more depth than your high school teacher goes, they will definitely start from first principles and it will definitely go along with your class. So hopefully you will find something useful in these videos as well as for my college students. Um, in fact, uh, you can use you can use these things and um, for example, the set of axioms that I end up using, set of postulates, axioms that I use for Euclidean geometry and the propositions that go with them, uh, were carefully selected to provide an emphasis on primary classical synthetic approach while also allowing for the early use of measurement, which is an important topic in geometry, especially at the high school level. And so this is set up so that it can be used with the high school students, the high school class as well. Similarly, the emphasis on inquiry-based projects, models, and dynamic software lend themselves to effective use in the secondary classroom. And the bulk of the GeoGebra resources public available were developed for junior high and high school classrooms. Foundations of Euclidean geometry is a main thing. Major component of course is the study of the foundations of Euclidean geometry from first principles. We will often approach topics informally before moving on to formal proofs, and we'll make extensive use of GeoGebra to dynamically illustrate all course topics. However, the ultimate emphasis is to develop rigorous proofs of all the foundational Euclidean geometry topics, along with dynamic illustrations, so that all students have a deep understanding of these classical topics. In my class, many of these things are developed through homework uh, exercises so they may not appear in these uh, in these videos. Another main thing is to look at non-Euclidean geometries. In addition to our study of Euclidean geometry, we will simultaneously study multiple non-Euclidean geometries including several finite geometries, taxicab geometry, hyperbolic geometry, and spherical geometry. Each of these classical Euclidean topics will be examined in these geometries and the comparison and contrast of the properties in Euclidean geometry with the properties in the other geometries will enlighten and deepen our understanding of Euclidean geometry. Um, and one of the things that this allows us to do is to see what is it about Euclidean geometry that makes certain things true because we'll see that in some of these other geometries it's still true even though things may look differently and in other cases things uh, when you change something, something else changes, and things that are true in Euclidean geometry are no longer true. And so uh, that's why we want to look at these things. Uh, because of this parallel study of multiple geometries, 
That's why we're going to postpone transformations until later in the course. Some high school classes may do transformations way up front in the course. Uh, I have a have, have a desire to do that a little bit later on. So transformations is a big part as well. We'll study those, particularly in Euclidean geometry. So by the time we get to transformations, we'll we will have uh, narrowed everything down to just Euclidean geometry. And we'll study these from multiple perspectives, including classical constructions and GeoGebra commands. We'll make connections among the transformation of formulas, graphs, tables of points, and their verbal descriptions, making connections with high school and college algebra, trigonometry, and pre-calculus. And we'll also use matrices to represent and perform these transformations analytically. Matrix representations of transformations can have either a vector space structure or a group structure, and those are more advanced topics for mathematics for undergraduates. And these structures will make then strong connections among geometry, linear algebra, and group theory. And finally, along the way, we'll pepper in a little bit of the history of geometry. Um, our mathema mathematics majors take a history of mathematics class that they'll do usually later on in this class, but we want to do a little bit of history while we're doing this course. And the history of geometry is one of the most interesting and influential portions of the history of mathematics. And the study of geometry appears early in cultures throughout the world, and advances in geometry continue to this day. So one of the things is mathematics is not just some dead subject that is that is all all done. Um, everything uh, there is more and more new mathematics being found all the time. Uh, for example, whenever I studied elementary school mathematics, most of that mathematics had been known for for thousands of years. By the time I got to high school, then most of that had been known for also for, for well over a thousand years. By the time I got to, as an undergraduate, most of the mathematics that I stir, studied happened in the last uh, couple hundred years. When I was in graduate school, everything had happened within the last, most of the stuff that I'd studied happened in the last century or so. And of course, by the time I wrote my dissertation, that was completely new mathematics. Um, so in particular, the attempt to prove Euclid's fifth postulate and the subsequent discovery and development of non-Euclidean geometries is actually a really fascinating epic, which resulted in a fundamental shift in the way we think about mathematics. And we may study several pieces of this uh, grand story. The text that we're using right now is College Geometry, a Unified Development by David uh, C.K. It I actually developed a lot of this stuff before reading this textbook, but it follows along pretty well with with most of the way I do things. Uh, we're also going to be reading a novel, Flatland and Sphereland. Uh, Flatlands by Edwin Abbott. It's an older book that's in the public domain. Sphereland's a newer sequel to Flatland. And uh, we're going to talk about the mathematical ideas in that. Some other textbooks that I've used in helping to prepare my materials. Um, Another book by David Kay, College Geometry Discovery Approach. Um, then there's also a book, Euclidean and Non-Euclidean Geometry's Development and History by uh, Marvin J. Greenberg. Geometry, Euclid and Belong Beyond by Robin Hartstorn. Hart uh, and then Elementary Geometry from an Advanced Standpoint by Edwin Moyes. So that gives you a quick overview of what my goals are for my college geometry class. I'll leave it to my students to read the rest of the most current version of their uh, first day handout for policies and procedures to get some more details about how they need to go on their specific course. And we're going to follow this up with a series of videos. I'm going to break these up into roughly uh, what we cover each week in my class. And then within that, there'll be, uh, there'll be a playlist for each week and then uh, videos, um, multiple of them for each week. Um, geometry is a fascinating uh, subject, and I, I think you'll have a lot of fun with this. And uh, enjoy.